Good evening ladies and gentlemen and welcome to Let's Play Black Guards Character Generation. Now in my previous video I went through the character generation process start to finish plus the first dungeon of the map. Now this video I'm going to go back to revisit the character generation process however I'm going to give tips on each character and why I create that particular type of character. Now that first character, the previous character I made was a ranged mage fighter. So pretty good, but it gave uh, just a sense, an overview of, of what you could all do with the character. I want to create a different character now, and I'm going to explain the process of why. And I'm also going to give advice on why you want to choose different things and uh, different combinations. If you disagree with me, by all means, post your comments below. So first of all, to be able to get this type of process, you go to New Game and then Expert Mode. First choice for me is, am I going to do a mage or not? Do I want magic or not? Now, I always prefer going magic. Why? Magic's cool. Magic's fun. Magic screws with the mind of the opponents. That's why. But you don't have to. There is the downside of choosing magic at this point in the game is that you've got, you've got to set aside X amount of your available points throughout the game to magic use, to magic advancement. And if you don't, by the second chapter you will be falling behind in your magic and then you'll think, oh why didn't I drop it in the first place? So if you started, you've got to continue with it. So I'm going to take yes, it's going to be magic user, and I'm going to take blondie here. The only reason is Mohawk is really cool. So <laughs> a lot of videos out there will have Mohawk uh, as their main character. I thought it would be different. First things first, give your character a name. And my character is going to be called Wrath. And then we start spinning points. Now again, you cannot increase your attributes above 14 and skills, spells, etc. can't go above 8 points. Otherwise it would be kind of unfair when you start your, start your game. Now, before I spend a single point, before I spend anything on base, weapons, talents, or spells, I want to decide on which tree I'm going to follow for the game. Because the different groups go together. Now, one thing in all my characters, I like having ranged weapons. I like this group here, specifically targeted shot and marksman. Reason being is that sometimes you're going to run out of astral energy. You're going to run out of the ability to throw spells. So, and your opponent is still going to be far away and you're going to want to do a shot at them and if it's out of melee range ranged weapons are the best way to go now ranged weapons as I've said before you can either go bows or crossbows crossbows do more damage but are a lot simpler bows do less damage but have more skills available so if you're going to go bows you'll have the option of triple shots which fires multiple arrows at the same time at a target and then later on arrow storm which is a nice advantage but if you look on the let's just select that if you look on the right here you've got to see what your skills have got to be at you've got to have your value of dexterity of 16 agility 15 these are really high values and they take time to work towards whereas if I were to take just crossbow then once I were to get to marksman, I only need a dexterity of 13 and an agility of 14. Much lower requirements. So that's why I prefer that one. Now this character, I want, since I'm going to start it, right, I'm going to go ranged weapons along with magic. My primary skill is dexterity and agility. And the other skills that, that complement that are this tree here under melee. Faint, target stab, death blow and blade storm. But if you look at the weapons that those require, they follow the weapons of daggers, swords, uh, sword sabers and fencing. And the second path follows along with spears. Which means that your heavy, heavy weapons under axes, maces and your two-handed weapons are out. So you've got to think about that. Okay, how can I complement that? If I wanted to do something different, if I wanted to go as a more melee fighter, a lot more power, a lot more ability, then I could have gone along with lines of you on the right, on the left side of melee, power blow, knockdown, hammer, and libera liberating burla. And but then they are more targeted to axes, maces, uh, swords, two-handed weapons, etc. 
and not towards daggers, spears and fencing weapons. So the two are mutually exclusive. You can choose all of them so you're more versatile, but of course it costs more points in the game. And you've only got X amount of points that you can be generating. Now of course you've got to decide these other bonuses. Vigilance down to Blade Dancer and Armor Use down to Armor Use 3. Now since I'm a mage, I can't use Metal Armor. So this Armor Use is a little bit unnecessary for me. Armor Use 1 could be great, but I'm limited to Leather Armor. Now here's the catch. If you were to use Metallic Armor, which you can do, then this is a great tree to run. But then your magic side of things will fail a bit more often. You'll have more failures on spells, so then you think, oh, why did I take magic anyway? But again, since I'm also going to be doing the more agile maneuver uh, weapon systems, or the fencing weapons and spears, I also want, I don't want something heavy like metal armor weighing down the character. It just slows down your character. So, but then, like I said, if I'm going to do heavy me melee, then these three here complement the melee skills. Simple as that. Eventually, I will, I will also pick up shield fighting. It's always a good bonus to have. It just makes it easier and more able to use your shield while you're fighting. Other passive skills to have are attack of opportunity. A character runs past you and you take a free strike at them. Very handy. The last skill I'm going to look at is the dodge line here. Dodge 1, 2 and 3. This makes it a lot harder to hit my character. Now since I won't be doing heavy armor, this is essential for my character. I just want to point out things on range spells. Your magic use, if you're going to concentrate on magic as a primary weapon, this is very handy for you. Being able to throw long, longer distances, as well as mastery of magic. Um, oral mastery makes things cheaper when you cast a spell. Shield gives you a bit more of a resistance all round, and city casting makes it more unlikely that your spells will fail. The side tree of dual wielding gives you superior mastery of weapons. So again, if you're going to go as a melee fighter or someone that is dedicated to close combat, good thing to have. Last one I'll show you is just for the Master Archer. Uh, Master Archer, you can... Yeah, just makes you more accurate, that's all. But look at that. Your weapon has to be up to a level 16. Takes time to get there. Okay, let's get my character going. I'm going to pick up targeted shots. And then for that, I need agility under feints and here 12 under intuition. So agility and intuition need to go to 12 quickly. Put that to 12 and intuition to 12. And then I'll pick up feints, confirm. Astral Regeneration confirm, and I can pick up Dodge, which, like I said, is essential. Now, those are the only skills I'm going to pick up at this point of the game, and I'll pick up the others later in the game when I reach those, what is called in-game, of trainers. Learn where the trainers are. They are very handy. Not all trainers can teach the same thing, so you'll find a fighter trainer later on, which will be maybe geared more towards your uh, fainting attacks with high agility dexterity. You'll find a gladiator trainer geared towards more heavy melee combat and melee skills. There'll be magic trainers, and there'll even be archer trainers. When you find them, use them. But look at the point costings of this. If you don't have the necessary um, action points, APs, you can't afford it. And APs are essential to stack up. Now, I'm going to be different with this character. Normally, a lot of your spells are fire based. But I've noticed in the game that fire resistance picks up quite early on in the game. And while there's nothing wrong with fire, it's very handy. You can set things on fire. <laughs> hey, it's fire. You can cause oil oil traps to explode. You can set trees and make barriers with fire. Very, very handy. But a lot of characters have fire. So I'm going to give you a different... I'm going to take a cold shock. And the reason I take cold shock is because not only does it cause a small amount of damage, it also negatively impacts a target's dexterity and initiative. Which means that a successful attack will make them both slower and less responsive to being attacked. It will also drop them down in the attack order, which means you can take them out a lot faster. So I'm going to pump that all the way up to 8. The reason I want it all the way to 8 is A, it increases my success chance, and B, it unlocks level 2, which causes more damage and more negative impacts. 
The other skill I want to pick up is Thunderbolts. The reason I want Thunderbolts is because it's a straight damage dealing uh, spell. With a lower astral cost than Flame, which comes in at 8. Thunderbolt comes in at 5 points. But its disadvantage is it's a, re it's a variable on damage. In addition, it relies very heavily on magic res resistance. So if someone's highly resistant, it's going to fail more or do less damage. But again, it stacks over time, and it always going to cost less. Although, I notice here, level 2 of flame also costs 12, but does a more higher damage range. So maybe later on in the game, it's not really. Let's see, 18 for 13. At level 3, 16, so slightly less. So yeah. And then the last two, last few I'll pick up is Poison, Shield, um, Anti-Magic. These two are debuffs. If your character gets poisoned or gets hit with an enchantment, you can use these to take it off. The only reason I'm putting one point in each now is these are very hard to learn in the game. You only pick it up at some points later on. You've got to do certain quests to get them early, otherwise you're going to wait. And Poison Weapons do come into play probably near the end of chapter 1 and from chapter 2 you will see poison weapons all the time. Now pick up Bomb of Healing and I'll just rank that all the way up to level 8 so then it does a higher chance of success but it also unlocks the second level. And then a couple of buffs. Stand Fast mm, yeah Stand Fast I'll pick that up 5 points into you and Double Vision 5 points into you then lightning find you five points into you. Now, these are going to be my offensive spells, my primary offensive spells. That's my mage user, and then the rest of the time it's going to be a support user. Hence the healing, the healing spells, and then the buff spells. Catlike and double vision. Double vision decreases the chance of a hit on you, so it makes you harder to hit. And then standby's catlike increases your your dodge and your melee attacks. So again, good buffs. Lightning Find You is a debuff. It's effectively the similar to cold, the side effects of Cold Shock, but it's dedicated to, to, to doing all the negatives from the word go. Another one to pick up for a good support class is this uh, Corp Professor Aching Limbs, which hits agility. And agility degradation? <laughs> it's fun. Right, now let's go into talents. Now, this is personal preference. Again, in the game, you can learn all of this in the game. This is just what your character starts with. Body control, willpower. Body control, ah, he's, he's a trained fighter, he's a trained fencer, so he knows when to, when to twist and when to turn. So I'll put five points into you. Willpower, well, it is a mage user, but he was sleeping in a couple of classes, so I only put into two. He's a bit of a wise ass, so I'll make him a street wise. But he paid attention when the melee, when the melee for Lord Master was teaching. Finally, he knows a little bit about wounds and how to, how to treat wounds. Now, one thing about this treat wounds is very handy, and that is, you can heal wounds. <laughs> okay, it's self-explanatory treat wounds. But in the game, you can get wounded. Now, when you get a wound, it is a negative modifier on your character. Um, it makes you hard, no sorry, it makes you easier to strike, it makes it easier to cause more damage on you if you've got a wound in a combat situation. So you want to treat it whenever you can. To treat a wound though, you have to always have a bandage in your belt. So if you're going to take treat wounds, once you've got, once you equip a belt, make sure you've got a bandage nearby. Although the nice thing is, it will also heal a few, a few hit points. For now, I'm, I'm happy with that. Perception, traps, survival, and animal wool I will pick up later in the game. Perception, great at finding traps, finding hidden objects. Traps, you can set traps and disarm traps. I seldomly set traps, but I do disarm traps. So that's why I'll pick that up. Survival is very handy because not only does it make prices or provisions cheaper and it later on waste less, it gives you a movement of bonus when you're fighting in a wilderness battle. Now there are only two types of battle map, wilderness and urban. So this is very handy for wilderness and of course streetwise is the urban scenario. 
and as you can see, gradually over time, this stacks to a pretty decent advantage. Animal Law and Warcraft, as I said before, give you buffs against either animals or humanoid figures. Take Warcraft because again, he was paying attention class. Now, as I said, since this character will be using f the same similar weapons, I will pick putting points into these two. Spears and fencing, and again he's going to learn to use a crossbow. He's a bit better at a crossbow than anything else. Now pay attention to the slide here. I've got fencing weapon selected. Currently I've got an attack of 4 and a parry of 6. Now if I were to equip a fencing weapon, so let's see, I need to go find an EP. There. Now I'll go back to character sheet. My attack value, my parry value, along with my initiative, changes based on where I have the slider. So I'm going to move it all the way to an assault. So his attack goes up to 12, but his parry drops down to 6. Now if I do the opposite, put it all the way to, to defend, his attack goes down to 8, but parry to 10. Now, this is how it works. The higher your attack, the more damage you'll do with the weapon. It's a bonus. The higher your parry, the more likely you are to defend against an attack. Fencing weapons are very nice because they come with a very good attack and parry as a base, but a very low damage potential. So it's always good to just to have them, but there, there we go, that's nice. I'll live with that. And of course the same applies to spears. If I were to equip a spear, there, and select weapon set 2, character sheet, and go back to weapon talents, my attack is 7, parry 9. Of course, disadvantaged with a spear as opposed to a fencing weapon, you got a low initiative, so you start later in combat. Nice thing with a spear is that it's got a good attack value, its parry is acceptable, and it strikes over two tiles. Fencing weapon strikes one tile away, this can strike two tiles away, and you can strike over low objects. Quite a handy advantage. Okay, now let's just put some final points into my character. I'll make him, he's a, he's a bit courageous, he's not a bright spark. It's the life of the party, and let's just say he's, he's got a bit of reasonable strength, reasonable constitution, and a good reasonable dexterity. Now over time you want to increase all of this, but as you can see, as you level them up, they get pricey. Now I want to work towards targeted stabs, I need dexterity of 12, and now unfortunately charisma is kind of expensive. So this is always going to be a hard one for me to get. And yeah, I'll put some into charisma. I want him to be, I want him to be able to use magic later on a bit more. Okay, I've got some points left. Weapons. I'll leave weapons at that, and I'll put them into spells. The reason I put it into spells now is because when in the start of the game, you've got almost no weapons. That's kind of I'm playing against the rules of the game. But you've got very few weapons at right at the start, but you've got magic. So having a few points in your magic is not a bad thing. I'll just do that. I've got five points left over. I'll live with that. Yeah, that's not too bad. Let's go to equipment and let's equip him out. First things first, armor. He's a mage, so stay away from metal armor. Simple as that. You've got metal armor on, you're going to have a disadvantage on your character. You're going to struggle with your character's casting ability. So I'll be sticking to leather armor and later on in the game when leather armor evolves I'll apply those. Pick up some gloves and then last, actually I'll pick up those gloves. Now the reason I took rope based gloves is because it's got a fire damage resistance. Now, if you look at normal gloves which are there, it's got a higher normal damage resistance which is in the early game but it's got zero fire damage. So yeah, just bear in mind that. And now let's put on the helmet, and there's my character, and he looks like a Viking. And then finally, I'll put on a belt so he can put things into his belt, so like say, oh, I don't know, healing potion and a magic potion. Now, you will be using these two a lot. Astral potion to regenerate astral points, so you can cast more spells. Healing potion because sometimes you need a quick pick me up. Now these ranged weapons here. Javelin, Axe and Throwing Daggers, they are quite handy if your character's got that skill applied. Mine won't. I'll avoid those skills. I, I don't mind not picking those up. He's not going to be using a poison, although 
poison items are quite fun. I've never actually actually used them yet, but <laughs> you get used it gets used against you a lot. So it might be worthwhile to look into, but as you can see, it costs a lot of cash. And in the game you will find that you'll spend most of your cash on your characters um your character's items. And lastly, I could have put in a ban actually you know what I'm gonna put in a bandage there. It's treat wounds. You need to be able to do that. And lastly, since he uses a ranged weapon, let's put that here. And then a couple of arrows. It's got a few arrows there. Now, first things first. Ranged weapons are great for ranged attacks. Ranged weapons are terrible for close range. Self-explanatory. If a car if a enemy gets within five tiles of you, you suffer minus ten to hits. May basically means it's, it gets incredibly hard to even hit the character, let alone to cause damage. Of course, when they're outside five, so you star six, penalty's gone, and then you then you got it fine to hit. Then he has perfect range. Your optimum range is between six and tile fourteen. Because from tile 5 and closer, tile 15 and above, you've got a negative to hit modifier. But of course, you can always try. The last thing I want is a leather shield, because he'll be able to fence and a shield gives him a bit of defense. Right, there is my character. And I'm just going to show you quickly how the, the buff spells would work in the first combat situation. And then I'll end this video there. Yep, confirm. Now before I click this, bear in mind, Anything applied now, anything done to your character now, it's done. Any action points which you got left over is lost. So I've got five here, but there's unfortunately nothing on these menus that cost five action points. So it's kind of a waste for me. I've got all the equipment I need. I don't need anything else, so I'm good to go. But bear in mind, spend all your points and equip whatever weapons and items you want. And once you see confirm, you can watch the video. It's a very nice introduction video with a dark twist in it. I'm going to leave that as a surprise for you. I don't want to give too many spoilers away. Okay, throughout the game, you will be having these in-game tutorials, which are very handy, which are very clear and detail exactly what you need to do and how you need to do it. Now, oh, I've got a wolf here. He's over a friend of mine. So now first things first, I'm going to use my character's ability for buffs and apply a buff to myself, which is two points for my ability to dodge and ability to hit. Now once I've applied that buff, I get the arrow up here. It shows you I've got a plus two to dodge, plus two to attack. So any attack now will be that much better. When I'm not done, I'll apply another buff, which is double vision. And this makes it harder for me to get hit. But as you can see, if I look by the battle log, I'll just drag down, it failed to apply. It happens. Okay. I'm not going to fight this wolf too long. Let's just give him a nice little bit of a negative debuff. I'm going to freeze him with cold shock. And now that's the gameplay, the game style I'm going to be doing all the game. I'll buff my character, and I'll debuff enemy characters. Now here's a prime example of wound. I'm actually glad that happened. If you see it, I've got this red slash across my face. You can have up to three wounds. The more wounds you have, the more negatives you have. As you can see, I've got negatives to attack, parry, dodge, range, initiative, and speed. All very bad. Now, I want to take a chance. I'm going to try and heal me. And I can use a bandage on myself. And unfortunately, it failed. So that's a bit bad. Oh, the chance of success was only 18%. That's why it helps. Put points into treat wounds. The other disadvantage of treating wounds is use of the bandage. So, if I want to do that again, I need to have a second bandage applied, which I don't have. Right, I'm going to end this video here. And I hope it's been informative. I hope it's helped you. Last thing to bear in mind when you apply, when you're creating your character is think what you want to do with your character. It's your character. It's your persona. You want to go ranged. Do so. But look at what skills complement each other and try and build around that you want to go melee, great, go for it. But also look at what complements it and think hard if you want to actually have magic on a melee character. Because again, magic and metal armor do not go together and a good strong melee character 
needs good strong armor which is metal finally if you want to go as a good mage supporting class look at your character your charisma your intuition those need to be pretty damn high you're going to want more points into astral points you've got more mana to cast spells and you're going to want to try and make your spells cheaper to cast with a high success so again look at building your character there